Did you ever imagine that you could make delicious homemade gnocchis right at home? We're going to find out how easy and fun it is to make them. Let's go. Buongiorno YouTube. Today we're going to be making a delightful Italian dish that is commonly mispronounced. Unlike spaghetti, linguine, cavatappi, these bite-sized potato dumplings are often mispronounced and referred to as gnocchis, gnocchis, or even my favorite and most ridiculous, gnocchis. So I never had an Italian Nona to teach me, but my Italian friend says that you pronounce it gnocchis, gnocchis, gnocchis. If you like my pronunciation and wish to see more videos, click the like and subscribe button and tickle that bell to be notified of future videos. Enough of this malarkey, let's roll. All right friends, here we go. We're gonna start with one big russet potato. It should weigh about a pound or a half a kilo. You're gonna peel and cut the potato into cubes as if you were gonna boil the potato to make mashed potatoes. Rinse the potatoes a couple of times to wash off excess starch and spark up the cooktop. Generously, and I mean generously, salt the water and wait for the water to come to a boil. Don't worry about over salting. Well, reasonably speaking. When the water comes to a roaring boil, it's time to turn down the temperature to a medium low heat. Check the status of your potatoes. Once they are fork tender and easy to poke apart, they're good to go. Drain the water into a colander. Transfer the potatoes back into the pot and begin to mash the potatoes. I don't have a potato ricer, so I use this type of masher instead. It works for me. Now, melt three tablespoons or 43 grams of butter in the microwave, making sure that the butter stays in the container and does not make a mess in your microwave. Once your potatoes had a couple minutes to relax, into the mashed potatoes, crack two whole eggs. One teaspoon or four grams of salt. Using a spatula, you're gonna beat the potato, egg, and salt until it is velvety smooth with no clumps. Freshly grate one cup or 120 grams of Parmesan cheese. Don't you dare use the pre-grated powder you find in the grocery store. You're making a nice dish. Do yourself a favor and grate it yourself. Transfer the potatoes into a mixing bowl. Add one cup or 120 grams of freshly grated Parmesan. Three tablespoons or 43 grams of melted butter one cup or 450 grams of ricotta cheese. To make life easier, start by kneading the dough in the bowl and transfer to a flat surface. Knead the dough until your dough looks like this. At this point, your dough should be soft and supple. Begin by cutting the dough in half. Notice the pockets of air, this is a good sign. Cut each half into half, making four equal pieces. Sprinkle a cutting board with flour so the gnocchi dough doesn't stick to the cutting board. If you have a small cutting board, cut the dough in half again so you have a more manageable piece to work with. Begin to roll the dough. It should roll out relatively easily. You worked hard enough to get the dough to where it is at this point, so make the dough work for you. The diameter of the dough will be a good reference on how big to cut each of the pieces. If you rolled it into a 1 inch or 2.5 diameter snake, cut the dough into 1 inch pieces. If the dough is thicker in diameter, cut it to the same length. Repeat the process until you have no more dough. Using a gnocchi board or a fork, roll the gnocchis to make ridges. The deep crevices will ensure that the sauce nestles right in there later. The small ridges on top is gonna do the same. Do this for all your pieces. P.S. This is a great stress reliever. Yes, there are pieces that may not all be the same size. Don't judge me. I was going for the rustic style gnocchis. Even though these gnocchis are all cut up and ready to put in the warm bath, we're gonna hold off for a couple of minutes. We're gonna be making a delicious sun-dried tomato pesto cream sauce, which will perfectly complement these beautiful gnocchis. Let's get started. In a pan, on low to medium heat, heat a quarter cup or 35 grams of pine nuts. 
Move around frequently until the pine nuts are golden brown and aromatic. You'll know when they're ready. Next, take three cloves of garlic. I got this cute looking head of garlic from my sister and brother-in-law. Thanks guys. In a blender or a container of your choice, combine three cups or three handfuls of fresh basil. Take the toasted pine nuts and add them to the basil. Take the roughly chopped garlic and add it to the mix. Add a dash of salt. As you're blending, drizzle on a half a cup or 118 grams of olive oil and a half a cup or 118 grams of Parmesan cheese. This was an epic fail, so let's forward to what it should look like. That's more like it. Spark up the range to boil the water for the gnocchis. Salt the water generously. Turn on another burner and we're gonna start making some sauce. Into a saucepan, add a half a cup or 118 grams of heavy cream. When the cream comes to a simmer, add in the butter and allow it to melt. Next, add the pesto you made earlier. Mix thoroughly, lower the heat to low, and allow the sauce to reduce. While that is reducing, into a boiling pot of hot water, add your desired amount of gnocchis. Stir and wait until they are floating. They're ready to remove. Back to the sauce. Add a few spoonfuls of the gnocchi water into the sauce. Adding pasta water into sauces is a well-kept secret and it will transform your dishes from good to great. Combine the gnocchis, sauce, toss in some sun-dried tomatoes, sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese, and you're good to go. There you have it, folks. Homemade potato gnocchis with a sun-dried tomato pesto cream sauce. Any no-no would be proud of these. If you like what you see here, please hit the like and subscribe button so you could be notified of future videos. I'm gonna dig in and then I'll let you know how it tastes. Whether you call these gnocchis, 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 or gnocchis, these things are light, they're fluffy, the pesto cream sauce is delicious, the sun-dried tomatoes give this dish an extra zing that's very special. I'm gonna keep eating here. Thank you for checking out Raffa Loves Food and we'll see you soon.